Hey guys, Chip here. And as many of you know, lately I have been spending a lot of time doing some deep dives into AI renders using text to image prompting. And in particular, I've been messing around with Mid Journey and Disco Diffusion, which are two different flavors of artificial intelligence rendering. And here are some of the images I've created. So long story short, I prefer Disco Diffusion over Mid Journey for a number of reasons, which I'm not going to get into here, but I've written an essay on it over on my Patreon. So if you're interested, you can join there for $1. And not only see that, but a lot of other stuff, which is going on with AI and Blender. And when I first got into Disco Diffusion, it was extremely confusing to understand how it worked and how to get it to do what I wanted to. For me, the online tutorials just didn't explain enough, and it's especially difficult if you're not already embedded in the AI community and understand the concept of collab notebooks, GPU settings, clip and diffusion models, and all that other stuff. And over the weeks, I have learned a lot more about it. And while it's still fresh in my mind, I thought I would share with you a tutorial on how beginners can get started quickly and for free in Disco Diffusion. The tutorial you're about to watch expects that you already have a Gmail account and know how to open and use Google Drive. I'm going to work with the free version of Colab so anyone can get started right away and create some fantastic images, just like the ones you see here. I've also successfully installed the same Disco Diffusion and Colab on my local computer, which I have at NVIDIA GTX 3090, and I'll do a demo side by side of the rendering times towards the end of the tutorial. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial on how to very quickly get up to speed with Disco Diffusion and Google Colab, and this tutorial is targeted to people who don't even know what Google Colab is or Disco Diffusion is for that matter. So just in case you're wondering, if you Google Disco Diffusion, what you are doing, you're going to come up with this very first one is going to be the latest version of what's called the Collaboratory or Colab Notebook. We can also look at images and you'll see a lot of crazy images that were created with this AI. Is Colab the same thing as Disco Diffusion? Absolutely not. So what is Colab? Well, Colab is the interface that you use to run it. So if I click on, uh, let's go back here. If I click on this, I'm going to come up here and I'll need to be logged into my, my uh, account and I'm logged into my personal account. So this, this is basically going to go exactly as it would for you the very first time. Make sure that you're logged into your Google account and you'll open this window. And now you're in what's called the Disco Diffusion version 5.4 notebook. Okay. And this is the Colab notebook. So what is Disco Diffusion? Disco Diffusion, as I said, is an AI artificial intelligence tool that can generate images from text prompts. So you type in a bunch of words and Disco Diffusion will create an image based on the settings and the words that you typed. So let's talk a little bit about settings. What are settings? So Colab is basically a single web page. And this web page has a bunch of these different modules right here, these little uh, areas, I guess they're called cells. And each one of these cells can be expanded and you'll see there's data in there. And as you go through this, you also see that as you expand it, there's actual code here. And so what this means is that each one of these cells runs a bunch of Python and that Python is run on the server, on the Google server that the Colab exists on. And that Python does a lot of different things. It downloads the latest versions of the AI engine, creates settings for the engine. It generates the images. It saves the images to your Google Drive. So all of these things are are what Colab does. But what Colab is not, is Colab is not the AI. It's just an infrastructure for running the AI. And each one of these cells, as we can see, and if I go in here and say view, let's col uh, uh, collapse all the sections, we can see that these are all the sections. There's the, the explanation, a tutorial, the setup, and then these diffusion the and clip models. And you don't really need to know much about these other than uh, there's one or two settings that we may want to adjust in here, and we'll talk about those a little later. And there's custom model settings, which we're not going to be doing anything with. The settings, and the settings here where we do a lot of stuff. So really what this is, is this is the batch name, and the batch name here says time to disco. So if I change this to something like uh, test, you notice it changes it here. So all this is doing is as we update these fields, it's going to change the Python code that gets run over here. So anytime we update this, we're going to want to make sure we run this code before we do a rendering. And I'm going to get into that in just a little bit. Now, the other thing I can do is I can also, I can show hide the code right here. So I can just basically work this way. But if I double click anywhere 
outside of a field, it's going to do the same thing by as showing and hiding the code. And and these little tools up here are things that you're not going to want to mess with right off the bat. I'm, we're, a little later, we're going to we're going to delete a few of these that we don't need. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to collapse that. The diffuse part is where we actually do the run, and we have things like. How many versions do we want? The batches number, um, display rates, uh, uh, and 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 this is really you know how often do we display uh, as it's as it's resing in the image? How often do we display? We'll talk a little bit about that later. And then there's a video section which we're not going to get into video today. So this is basically just for still renderings. We're going to talk about it. What do we do? Well, the very first thing we want to do is. I'm going to copy this to my drive, and why I'm doing why am I doing that? I can run it directly, but if I want to change settings and then go back and open up a version with those settings, I should copy this to my drive, and I can copy as many as I want. So, for instance, let's just go ahead and say file, uh, save a copy in drive. So I'll do this. It's creating a copy. So now here's the original. Here's the copy. And I'm going to close the original. I'm going to stay in here, and I'm going to go in here. Now I can double click in here, and I'm going to just call this tutorial, right? So I'll just type this tutorial. Okay, so we have that done. And uh, if I go into my Google Drive now, and we'll see that in my drive, let's go ahead, go into list view, and we'll see that if we sort by last modified, we'll see it created this new folder called Colab Notebooks. And here's that one I just used. Now, let's pretend for now that I'm going to close this, that I've used it, and I'm, you know, I want to get back to it. So I come into my drive, and I just double click on this, and it's going to reopen that particular notebook. That's an important concept that you can save multiple notebooks into your Google Drive, each with different sets of settings, and then you can reopen them. That's important for you to understand. So one thing I should mention is that after we rename this, we should go ahead and save. So we'll just go in and do a save. And then when we go to our collab notebooks, of course, we have it named correctly there. And furthermore, any settings changes that we make to it, we want to also save. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have under view, we're going to basically say collapse sections and We've got all these different uh, cell uh, uh, groups of cells. And as I mentioned earlier, we can click these little buttons to run. You know, if I click, if I go into, for instance, this one here, this has got Python in it. If I go here, there's no Python in here. There's no Python. There's some Python in here, but there's some that don't have any Python. So if we look at this first one, right, this particular version just tells us about credits and change logs. So I'm going to go up here with this selected. You can see the highlight it's selected because it's got this shadow. I'm going to just delete this because, because I really don't want to run this every single time I use it. So I'll click delete here. And the tutorial has this nice Zippy's Disco Diffusion Cheat Sheet. Uh, and I go ahead and I'll save this to my Google Drive as well. So that I have that up there file and we'll say make a copy and we'll just make a copy of it and then we can delete it. Now we have this up here on my Google Drive as well. And that way this cheat sheet's great for looking at what some of these settings are used for. So I'm going to go back here to collapse. So now we're in the tutorial. That's the only thing the tutorial is good for. I'm going to delete that. Now setup is important, but we only need to run setup once per session. Now, what do I mean by session? Well, when you use Colab and you set it up, it's going to actually hook you up directly with a server there at Google. And that server is going to be using its GPU to do all of the calculations and renderings for the AI. So you can click this once and we'll do that, but we're not going to do that quite yet. I'm just going to go through and say, okay, we, you know, this is something that we'd run once. This is something we run once. This custom model setting, if I look at this, you'll see there's no real settings in here that we need to worry about if the diffusion model is custom. We're not going to use any custom diffusion models. So we're going to go ahead and delete that as well. So there's that, that gone. And let's go ahead and view and let's collapse sections again. And now we go into settings. Settings is uh, important. We're going to have the batch name, and we're going to call this one um, tutorial. Now, notice, as we mentioned, that anytime you edit this field, it's going to change it over here, right? So here's tutorial here, here's tutorial. If we say tutorial 2, it's tutorial 2 over there. So these, this is really what this does, is that this particular area as you edit these form fields, it actually updates the Python it's going to run. And this is the button that you use to run it. And if you double click anywhere outside of a field, it'll collapse all that. So we're going to need this and we're going to get into it in just a second. We're going to need this and then we need the diffuse. Of course, this is where we actually do all the rendering. We're going to need this. Again, if I double click over here, it'll collapse that. Uh, uh, hide the code. And then with the video, and I'm not going to use the video. I'm not going to even, I'm not going to talk about video. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to delete it, right? So now I have, if I, if I view and I say 
collapse sections. Now I have a very sparse interface, much more. And of course, right now I'm gonna hit save. So the first thing I'll do is I wanna test to see if this thing works. And, and I'm gonna go into settings and instead of 1280 by 768, I'm gonna use something a lot smaller, All right? So I'll come in here, I'm gonna make it, let's say 400, comma 400. And the number of steps, instead of 250, I'm gonna make it 50. And then I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna save that now because if I do, it's gonna watch, watch what happens. It's gonna give me this error message and then it's gonna have this marching ants. This marching ant says it's, it's, it's trying to run and then when it runs, it'll give us an error. And the reason why it's giving us an error is because we didn't run any of these other things first. So what I'll do is I'll go up into these, I'm gonna run them one at a time and then I'll show you that typically you just do run all. You just start at the top and say run all. But I wanna run one at a time just to show you a little bit about and talk a little bit about what happened. So I'll go to the first one and I'll hit run. It's gonna run this, uh, all of these uh, settings. It says permit this notebook to access your Google Drive file. So I'm gonna say connect to Google Drive and it's gonna choose my Google Drive and I'll allow it to connect. And so now it's gonna go ahead, I'm gonna expand it. So this tells me that I have a GPU, which is a Tesla T4. So uh, as we're letting this run and it's completed, you can see that's, that's checked. These are, these are, you know, they'll check them when they get completed. So now it's running all of these. It's gonna take a while for it to run all these. And let's talk a little bit about this right here, this Tesla T4. This is the actual Tesla, I think, is the group name of the service. T4 is our is, is really what we're interested in. And I'll talk a little bit about that while it's running. So best to worst GPUs. A100, almost never get it. In fact, when people get it, a lot of times they post online that they got this. It's like a super fast GPU. I don't know that I've ever seen. I've never gotten one. Uh, and I have the highest paid plan that you can get. Uh, G100 is next. V100 is next. P100 is next. This is typically what I run is this P100. I've very rarely gotten any. I, in fact, I, I think I've only gotten P100s. P4 next, K8. If you get K8, it's probably not a good idea to use it because it'll take forever. But because we're on the free plan, we're only going to get probably P100, T4, and K8. Mostly T4s, I think, is what's going to happen on the free plan. So let's go back to here, and we'll see that we're running on the T4. If you want to, you can basically go into runtime, and you can say uh, disconnect and delete runtime, right? And then wait maybe five or ten minutes, and then run it again and you might get a better uh, a better GPU. But for now, you know, if we look at this, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll to the top, click on this and you see, okay, so we're all done. So the setup is complete. So what did we do? We installed the dependencies, it did all this, it ran all this code. And so now what we need to do is, let's go back up, I'm gonna minimize this. Now I'm gonna uh, load the diffusion and clip model settings, right? So I'll hit this button. And this will actually do a lot of different things. It uses this 512 by 512 uh, fine tune. And there's another one here, which is the 256. If you're running into memory errors a lot, you might want to convert it to this one right here. But right now, this is this is the best one that you can use. But if you run into memory errors, convert it down a little bit. And I think the rest of this is just default. You can change some of these things. I don't know that much about what they do yet. I probably should, but I've been using this only for a few weeks. So it makes it makes it good in the sense that I can talk about this as a, as a beginning user. But there are some things here I don't know. As far as I can tell, uh, there's not much that you want to change in here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this alone. And I'm going to let this go. Now, if I want to, I can click here. And it's just going to wait. That little that little dash line. The red means that it didn't it didn't it failed last time it tried to run. But the little marching ant circle thing there, that means that it's next. It'll run next, right? It'll run the next time. It always runs from top to bottom. So the you know, and if I you know, so if I do this, and I look at the settings. It's going to fix that tutorial. It's going to change that that resolution size. It's going to change the st number of steps. The number of steps is basically how many times the AI runs. So basically it's a progressive model where it runs multiple times, keeps refining the image as it goes. So this says it's gonna go 50 times, but it's gonna skip. So it's gonna skip the first 10. So we're gonna get 40, 50 minus the first 10. The reason why do we wanna skip the first 10? Well, it uses a, uh, a noise pattern in the first 10. And in the, the first 10, that noise pattern kind of builds a little bit. So it's always a good idea to skip a few steps at the beginning. Now, if we're actually using an, an, an image, an initial image, then we're going to, we'll change that. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a little bit. So I'm going to go to the settings now. And these little settings, remember that if we look at this, 
This is the code that it has to run. And so if I hit play on this, look at that, it runs almost instantaneously. And typically, once you get this, this far, you're only gonna work with settings, maybe once or twice extra settings. I'll talk about that later. But right now, I'm not gonna get into that. Actually, let's talk about it now. The only thing you're probably gonna wanna change in here is this cut IC power. So if you have a rendering and it doesn't have enough detail, you can bump this up to say something like 30 and that'll punch out the detail a lot more. Maybe you can go higher than 30, but 30 is probably a good number to go if you're wanting. But one is actually works pretty well. So I, that's the only thing I usually ever mess with in this particular area. There's These cuts are valuable and understanding these, but for the most part, especially at this level, leave them the way they are. And when you're, when you're just starting out, remember that we're just starting out, we don't have a plan. If I click on this service, you'll see that you can actually sign up for Colab Pro and Colab Pro Plus. One is $50 a month, the other is $10 a month. So the difference here, and let's just go ahead and talk about this now, is that the $10 a month, you have to be sitting here using Colab all the time. It's going to ask you, hey, are you still connected? Are you still connected? You can't run batches as well. Like if you say, I want to do 50 of them, it may get to four or five or seven and just kick out. You don't, you never know, right? You certainly, if you ever close the, if you ever close it or walk away from your computer or shut down your computer, it's going to stop. Whereas Colab Pro, on the other hand, this one will run. Once you get it started, it'll run. You can turn off your computer. You can walk away. I use this a lot because I have a Chromebook and I'll type something in my Chromebook and I'll close it and Colab Pro will continue to run and continue to run and continue to run and we'll talk a little more about uh my my particular workflow but i like colab pro for that reason and i like it more than the mid journey 30 dollars option because this thing can run you can set up two of these collabs one two and run them all day long if you want you know 24 7 whereas that's not going to happen in mid journey so as you're learning it's probably a good idea to consider one of these two uh you know as you as you move forward so let's go back back here close this we'll go back in here so now we have this set up we said we, we already ran this we got that done so let's go ahead and close that and now let's look at diffuse so so actually before i do that let me, let me talk a little bit about these settings so we have the step the width and the height none of this stuff really matters the saturation scale is how saturated you want this to be a zero means just randomize the saturation if you go to something like a hundred thousand it'll be more towards black and white or even three hundred thousand i think if you look under under our zippies thing we, so if you look in here you type in sat scale it's zero to twenty thousand uh set to zero to turn it off meaning it'll just be random if used it will help mitigate oversaturation if your image is too saturated increase the saturate scale to reduce the saturation so i assume if you get up to two thousand or twenty thousand i should say that you're getting to almost zero saturation so that's something uh to be aware of okay so uh, forget this, nothing in there that you need to worry about. Uh, and we're not doing any video, so we're gonna skip that whole thing. And then the, the image settings, well, here's where we put, if we wanna have an image to start from, this is what we put it here. We'll just basically go and get an image, an HTTP image that we can reference. How do I do that? Well, a lot of different ways. Search Google for a, like a Star Wars docking bay. Let's do that for instance. And we go to images and we find something we may like, like, uh, oh, let's just take that. And then look at some of these others, maybe uh, something like this. And then uh, I can right click on and say open image and new tab. And I can look at this, an image. So I can take this, control all, copy that and go into a new browser and say paste and see if I, okay, that image came up. Now it's not very big, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to basically blur it anyway. So that's okay. So if we want to, we can take that, you know, once I've tested it to make sure I can get to it, you can come back in here and you can just put, paste it right in here, right? So you like that, just like that, that's how you do it. But I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna leave it at none for now because I'm just testing it out. The initial scale, the init scale is basically, uh, controls how strongly that it'll try to match the image that's provided. So, you know, if you want it to kind of hint at the image, you leave it lower. Uh, if you want it to be very accurate, you keep it higher. So a lot of times if you're refining an image, like let's say you have an image that you really like, you just want to add a little more detail, you want to go high on this. And this clip guidance sale, one thing I did, I skipped over this. So this number is how much does the AI track the image? This number right here, 5,000, and we might make this 50,000. Doesn't really matter, but oops, uh, 50,000 is not a bad number for this. It's how much are we tracking the prompt? So are we, you know, are we really going to focus hard on making the prompt as accurate as possible, right? So that's what that is. I, I think for smaller images, maybe 
5,000 works. I would leave it at the default. If you think it's not tracking enough, then up it maybe to 50, 000, up to 50,000. You can again look in this Zippy's Disco Diffusion thing and you can find out what that is. It says right here that the init scale is balanced against the clip guidance scale. And it talks about the clip guidance scale tells DD how strongly you want clip to move towards your prompt every time step. So that's important to understand. So those two, these two, you might change, but I would leave them as default for now. And then we go into the prompts. We said that we already said in the extra settings, as you recall, that we might change this POW if we want more detail. It'll do that. And again, let's go back. And here's our cut IC POW. This is sets the size of the border used for inner cuts. These high values have larger borders and therefore the cuts themselves will be smaller and provide finer details. So this is to add more detail like we mentioned earlier. Okay, so now that this is done, let's take a look at our prompt. And as you know, the prompts are really the most important thing in getting uh, an image to render. And re so a couple things to think of. First of all, this is zero and one. This 100 right here is not necessary because this is for animations sakes, right? So I'm going to, it's basically going to change the image at the hundred spot. So I'm going to basically delete that. Uh, and I'm going to also, this, this image prompts, I'm going to delete that. I'll go here. This is our prompt, a beautiful painting of a singular lighthouse, comma, shining its light across a tumultuous sea of blood by Greg Rakowski and Thomas Kincaid. So I can basically, you know, make this a comma uh, if I want to. Greg Rakowski, Thomas Kincaid, turning on art station. So the idea here is that the first part should be the most important descriptive elements of what it is that you're wanting to render. Now, keep in mind that words like beautiful are important of a singular height. Let's make a gigantic. So, you know, adjectives are really important. It works really well with good adjectives. And uh, to most of us, uh, see, let's not do a blood. I don't want blood. We'll just, we'll do like this. Uh, I'm going to just clear out the spaces here. I don't think it really matters by, let's, let's do, um, I'm going to try like Ridley Scott here, famous directory director, and I'm going to get rid of Thomas Kincaid. So it's a little more dramatic and trending on art stations. Fine. I'll, or I'll delete that. I'm not really sure exactly what this is a completely different quote, yellow color scheme. So I don't really sure know if that's any different than just adding a comma here or not. I just don't know, but I'm going to delete this. I haven't really used it much. The only thing I've actually used it for is something like DOF depth of field. So depth of field, and you can say uh, minus four would be a number that says there's no depth of field, right? And if you put like zero, there is regular depth of field, which, which in that case, I just can leave it off. But so, and I can also just type in depth of field if I want to have something that's, that has a little bit of obvious depth of field in the camera motion, I can put that in there too. So let's delete that comma. And I think this looks good. So uh, now I've got everything else that's done. We, we, uh, we save this. You can see it's got that green button there. So, and then all we do is we hit this button right here. that says uh, the prompt, we hit that. Now that saves that, that was really fast. And then I come down to the diffuse. So what is the run? So display rate is 20. Well, I wanna, I'm gonna set it to three. So I wanna see every third render I wanna see. Baxis is 50, I wanna get 50 images. Doesn't really matter, you probably won't go all, go all the way to 50, but that's fine. Uh, resume run is if you, if you interrupt for any reason you wanna resume, you can do that. I don't really use any of those. That's really all the settings here. And then you just hit the play button here. And now you'll see it starting to run. And now it's a little bit slow because this is the free version that we're using. Uh, the version that I use uh, because it's the Colab Plus runs quite a bit faster. Um, but you'll see what it's gonna do is it's gonna start off and it's gonna create a single frame of noise to start off with, right? And there's the noise frame right there. And then we remember we have 10 more frames. If we go up here a little bit, we'll see that we're gonna skip 10 frames and we're gonna end up with 50 total frames, 50 total steps. So I'm gonna go in here and here we start to render. Now, one thing that I didn't talk about that might be of interest to you is if you wanna save individual steps of the of it, you can do that also. And that's again, um, in this extra settings area. And while we're, while we're rendering down here, see that you can see this is rendering every three frames. While we're in this extra settings area, this intermediate saves will actually create a folder with some of the saves. So let's, let's do that. For instance, let's come back here. I'm going to click here and turn this off. So that's off now. And I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to say uh, intermediate saves. So this is the number, uh, like since I have 50, let's do uh, 10. We'll do 10. So that means 
every five or no, we have 40 frames. So every four frames, it's going to give me a save. So I'll hit that. I'll click the button to save it. If I want to go up here and change anything, anything I change, I want to make sure I hit the button and save it. So, uh, in fact, since we quit, let's go ahead and look at my collab notebook real quick or my, my, my Google drive and see, we have this AI folder. Now I just created this. We go in here, we go to disco diffusion. We go into images out. And in here, in this tutorial folder, we have, this is where it's going to hold the images, right? We don't have any images yet. We don't have any partials yet, but that's where we're going to put everything. So let's go back here and let's go to, uh, we save the basic settings and we save the extra settings and we didn't change the prompt any. So we'll leave that alone and we'll just come over here and we'll do the run again. And now when it's running, it's going to basically start to save some of these interim frames as, uh, as it's, uh, going through each one of these steps. So right now it's, as it says, it's prepping the model and let's go ahead and let it go ahead and get through some of these. Okay. So you can see that we're down to 17 of 40 right now, 18 of 40. Let's go back into our Google drive and you'll see that here's the partials, right? So here's some of the partials and you can see over here, we're, we're seeing them You know, I can click on here and I can, you know, you'll see it kind of res in as it goes, as we go through these partials, you know, go from there. So it, res, it kind of reses in as we as we get closer and closer. So that's really the way it works. Once we finish a rendering, we'll go to the images out, and it'll put that finished image at this level, right, or right at this level, right in the tutorial folder above the partials right here. So let's go back and let's see what we have. So we're at thirty-eight to forty, thirty-nine to forty. So it'll it'll finish this rendering pretty fast and we're going to start a new rendering. So now we're starting the next one. Now if we go over here uh, in our Google drive, we'll see that, let's see, there it goes. Okay. So there's, here is that image that we just rendered and this is the settings for that image. So it's, what's nice is I can always look at what settings I use for a set of images. What if I want to change this a little bit? Let's go back in here and I'm going to pause it one more time and I'm going to go over here and I say, well, a lighthouse is kind of vertical in nature. So instead of 400 by 400, let's do 300 by 600. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit larger. Now, uh, remember, if we start getting these numbers too high, we're going to get out of memory error pretty fast. So just, just, just give you a little heads up on that. I'm going to save that. The other thing I want to do is I want this to be a little bit more photorealistic. It's a little uh, more illustrative right now. So instead of a beautiful painting, I'm going to say um, a photograph, a beautiful photo of a gigantic lighthouse. And then in really Scott, I might also put, uh, so there's some different words I can use. I can say photo real, uh, photo realistic. I can put uh, octane 3d, which is a, uh, a, a 3d renderer, some other things I can use different names, you know, terms in here. Once I do this, don't forget, I have to save Then I can come back and click on do the run. One other thing I want to mention is that, uh, the way I do this, the way I work is I typically start very small with very low settings, right? So these settings up here that we're using this 50 steps is a very small setting. When I get ready to finish this render, I'll double these outputs right here. I'll change this setting to at least 250, if not 300, it depends on whether I'm using an image or not. And we'll talk about using an image here in just a second. Um, and I might up the clip guidance scale at the same time because I want it to, to follow more the text prompt than what it's doing. I might play around with those at some point, but, but when I'm doing the final one, this goes to 250 and this doubles the resolution. And then of course the skip steps has to double also, especially if you're using an initial image and let's take a look and see what we got here. So this is starting to see this as a much larger image. And this is actually not a very good one. You can tell. So if I want to skip this image, I can stop and do another one, or I can wait for this to complete. And by waiting for it to complete, it'll write it out, which is kind of nice because then I'll, it'll write the prompt out also. So I have that stored and then start a new one. So now I'm looking at these and, and let's go back into our drive. Let's look at what we have here. So we have, you know, date modified. This is, this is the last one. You can see that these actually seem to have two views on them. So that doesn't really make sense. That might be the aspect ratio. I'm not sure what that is, but they're also not very photographic. Um, so you might have to tweak the settings, tweak the prompt. I would tweak the prompt to get that a little, a little more photographic. So let's go ahead and try a new one. So we're going to go back to this image right here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the image, right? So I'm going to start with an image. 
and we'll go all the way up here to our init image settings, control V. So I pasted it there. And then it says, set the skip steps to 50% of your steps if you want to use an init image. Now, that means it's going to be very accurate. It's going to look a lot like this if I do that. And, and we can do that and show you what that looks like. So let's go ahead and say the steps are 50. So our skip steps are going to be 25. So we'll do the 25. And we also want this to be roughly the same resolution as this one. And this is 534 by 326. So 500 by 300 probably is good. 500 by 300. And then we'll save this. And maybe we'll name it something else. Maybe we'll name this one a uh, sci-fi. Something like that. Save it again. Make sure we save it. And now let's go in and let's get a prompt. Let's see, I have one set up here. Let's go ahead and grab a prompt. Five uniform men work working with eight robots in the in the middle of a huge docking bay of a spaceship. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, so we'll do that. And we've got to save that too. And now we'll hit this run, do the run, and we'll see what we get. You can see this is the init image. That's the initial image that pops in the very first time. And it's starting to res in. And you see that it's not changing a lot, right? Because that it's using that basic image. And it'll, it'll go ahead and, and flesh that out quite a bit more. But as you can see, it's it's not quite doing a lot different. And let's go ahead while we're at it. You can see it's going to flesh it out a little bit more, but it's not uh, going to change it significantly. It's one of the reasons why I don't like using the 50% rule. I will probably go for for 50 steps, I'll probably do 18 here, 18 or 17, 17 or 18 are, is kind of a good number, right? I'm going to, I'm going to hit that. Now notice I hit play, but it's, it's using that marching ants. And the reason why it does that is because I come back down here, I'm still running this, right? So it's done. It's, it's, it's running the second version. It's already done. It's done one. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this. And now this one already ran, right? So meaning that marching ants one already ran because I had it already selected. So I didn't go back in here and just hit play again. And we're going to go ahead and do the next one. Okay, so let's go ahead back and take a look at what we have here. We'll have to go back out and go into sci-fi. And you see now we have, you know, some of these different images here. They're little tiny images. I really can't tell too much about what's going on, but you can see that we've adjusted some of this. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show you, I've got this same notebook set up on my local machine, and that's that's a subject for a different tutorial, and it's a lot more complex than what we've been over. But what I want to show you is I have a 3090, and this is the basic one that we were, we've been using. And I kind of want to show you the difference between the speed of these two, right? Same, you know, we have the same init image, we have the init scale, and the skip steps. All this is all pretty much the same, the prompts are the same. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and show you kind of a little bit of the speed difference here. Go and go. So we're starting at frame zero. So we'll start to see what happens. Now, one thing to note is that these are two very different images because it uses a different seed value every single time. So just because we have the exact same settings does not mean that we're going to get the same image. And that's one of the reasons why we do these batches, right? So we do a batch of 50. So we can take a look at 50 different images and see which one we like. Now, at this time, I don't really know how to recreate an image. Let's say I like this image, but I want to make it a higher resolution. I'm not sure how to do that. I know that we can force a seed value, but I don't think it's the same thing. And so I'll probably have to do some more research and do a video on on that because I think can see, I can see where that's pretty value. Midjourney has that capability to go back and uh, upscale an image uh you know, an existing image larger. So I'd like to learn a little bit more about how that works. So let's go ahead and we're going to let this finish and then I'll come back and give you some final thoughts. Okay, so I ended up having to uh, render this one on the Google server, then shut down Camtasia, my recording software, and render this. There's actually a two-minute difference between this. So between this one being rendered in Camtasia, this is the local, this is this is the one being rendered locally on my 3090. There's about a two-minute difference between this being rendered with Camtasia, the screen recording software on versus with it off. And so what we ended up with was on the left, uh, on the Google Colab server, it was 12, 46, 12 minutes, 46 seconds. And this is five minutes and 32 seconds. So you, so you kind of get a feeling for uh, the relative speeds for both of these. Um, and as I mentioned, we're not going to go into great detail about how we set up a local 
version because it is quite a bit more complicated. I might do a video on that. So the last thing I would like to mention is that if you have questions about this, please don't post questions in the YouTube chat channel. I probably won't get to them. If I do, I'm just going to tell you to go to my Discord channel. And on my Discord server, which I'll post the link to in the description as well as I have it shown right here, uh, I have these three different areas, AI Gallery, AI Stuff, AI Blood Toys, which is a, this is a, uh, a book that we're illustrating, that the community here is illustrating based on, uh, it's, it's a science fiction kind of a Michael Crichton kind of book that a friend of mine wrote years ago that we're illustrating. But anyway, long story short is that AI Stuff is where I want you to post this stuff if you have questions, and in the AI Gallery, if you have some cool images you want to throw in here, there's a lot of interesting stuff that a lot of different people have done uh, and that we're talking about a week. Go ahead and click the URL and you'll jump into uh, this Discord and then just ask away. So I should also mention that I also have a $1 Patreon, so you can join for just $1. And in here, I talk a lot about some of the AI stuff. I give away a lot of content. This is a, a 27 free lessons on how to render interiors in Blender using EV. These are some more of the images and, and what I'm learning about as I uh, start to experiment with Disco Diffusion and Mid Journey as well. So there's a lot of interesting things going on there. Um, and I give away like different characters that I've designed, talk about, you know, some other things like some workflows. And there's just a lot of, a lot here. There's a, one of the add ons that uh, I created about a year ago that uh, we sell that I just uh, gave away the first version because we just updated it to the second version. And there's, there's, you know, a lot of stuff, tutorials, all kinds of things here that, that uh, you might find interesting. So that's for a buck. Uh, and, you know, you can just jump in. There's, there's I, I think there's, there's got to be at least hundreds of posts in here. So I've got almost a thousand members now. So might be more by now. Who knows? Anyway, so th that's really it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I know I looked uh, long and hard trying to find a tutorial that could communicate uh, some of this stuff. And it turned out I had to... Uh, piece it together from various tutorials and online conversations and hopefully this is something that would help you guys as well thanks a lot for watching bye